Chris, please. Chris it is, then. And you can call me Lily, please. Remember that the next three months here can be either a moment or an eternity. It's really up to you. Yes, ma'am. Did Warden Ingram give you the welcome to the campus speech? <laughs> Sounded a little more like the Dean of Women's lecture on the dangers of promiscuity. <laughs> Good, you got a sense of humor. Sometimes you need it here. Excuse me. like two bowling pins in the last frame. One week from today, I'm gonna stand right where you are and gamble that you'll stop a foot away just like I did. <laughs> I tell you what, this is really a tough school. If you flunk, you get arrested for manslaughter. <laughs> Woo! Are a very brave man. Yeah. Hey, Foxy lady. Things are looking up. Welcome to Kaleo Country Club. transfer we've had this month due to overcrowded facilities at county. Actually, I volunteered. I was hoping to get into your work furlough program. Well, we'll see. Your record for the past six months has been very good. Thank you. Christine, you're a lucky young girl. There are many worse institutions in the state to spend your last three months in. Believe me, I know that, Miss Ingram. I just want to do my time and get straight. Well, come along. We'll get you into orientation and get you settled. <laughs> This is Christine Martin. Miss Burton is your correction counselor. She'll see to your orientation and to your work assignment. Welcome to Kaleho, Christine. Chris, please. Chris it is, then. And you can call me Lily, please. Remember that the next three months here can be either a moment or an eternity. It's really up to you. Yes, ma'am. Warden Ingram give you the welcome to the campus speech? <laughs> Sounded a little more like the Dean of Women's lecture on the dangers of promiscuity. <laughs> Good, you got a sense of humor. Sometimes you need it here. Excuse me. I see what you mean about a sense of humor. Sorry, not with Lonnie. She sent a couple of women to the infirmary for laughing at her. One of the unwritten rules? Among others. I'll try and fill you in, but you'll probably pick up pretty quickly. Now, about your work assignment. Oh, I was hoping I'd get in your pre-release furlough program. Oh, Christine, you gotta be here for a while. I mean, I have to get to know you a little before I can make a recommendation. Oh. What kind of work did you hold on the outside? Well, I worked in a diamond brokerage office. <laughs> oh, well, we can't exactly place you there, can we? And I worked in a massage parlor. Oh, yeah? It was a real massage parlor. I'm a terrific masseuse. Okay, okay. We have a physiotherapist that comes in once a week. Maybe I can get you assigned to the infirmary. Mm. 
new chicken coming to the roost. A young lady, Matron Wallace. We're all ladies here at Kaleho, remember? Okay, empty your pockets. Drop your gear on the counter. Leave your things with Agnes. She'll catalog them for you and give you a receipt. Big agony, my friends. Had a ladies wear notions of fumigation. Chris Martin, fumigation? A lot of stuff here. You know, you're not checking into the Biltmore, honey. This way. What? Skin search in here. Come on. Oh, not again. Come on, I just came from county. Sorry, it's part of the processing. Come on. Start shucking down to the pink. Just pretend I'm your mama. Nice girl. Yeah. I'd like to see her stay that way. You've been staring. I like your moves. Let me buy you a drink? You wouldn't let me buy you one. Well, I can't keep track of the cards when I drink. Ruins my concentration. Give the lady another. I'll uh, have mineral water. All right, sir. Interesting watch. You noticed? <laughs> I noticed you won a lot of money. <sighs> what is it, some kind of magic poker machine? No, it's just a calculator, simple one. Helps me keep track of the cards, figure percentages. Mm, yes, you do seem to know your way around a poker table. It's one of my interests. What are your other interests? Dice, roulette, pretty ladies. In that order? Depends upon the lady. What about this lady? Oh, I get the feeling you could be top of the list. Hmm, it's the only way to fly. Thank you. To being top of the list? Nice grip you got there. I don't like your watch. Well, you don't have to wear it. I don't like people that come to my place and cheat. Oh, I don't cheat. <laughs> I'm just very smart. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, you let go of my wrist, or I'll break some of your parts. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think maybe you better leave. Uh, oh! I think I just outwore my welcome. Uh, I think you did. I didn't get your name. Ted Markham. Chris Monroe. Hi. You uh, think we're about to become an item? I think we're about to become a statistic if we don't get out of here. You got a car? Right there. My place or yours? I'll follow you to your house. How about Vegas? Pardon? Will you follow me to Vegas? We could catch a jet from LAX. Are you kidding? Oh, I never kid on Wednesdays. Well, I have to stop by my place and get a few things. Not necessary. What you need, I'll buy. <laughs> I have to warn you, I have very expensive taste. I wouldn't have it any other way. My car's over there. I'll follow you to the airport. I think you better get in my car quick. Hey, that fellow has a gun. So do I. Yeah, so I noticed. Why? I'll explain later. Get in. Don't let him get away. Bye. Go get the car. Uh, I suppose you've noticed they're shooting at us. Yeah, I noticed. You know, I must tell you, I get very upset when people shoot at me. It's worse when they hit you. Oh, you look on the positive side. I like that. <laughs> Well, your class is the only 
link I can find between Beth Thomas and Jimmy Harris. And I was wondering if you could tell me anything that could help locate them. They were both bright, good-looking girls. Other than that, I can't recall anything out of the ordinary. You didn't have any contact with them outside of class? <laughs> well, considering my reputation, that's a pretty fair question. In answer to the question, no. What about 1977? Weren't you lecturing at Berkeley? Yes, I was. Why? Do you remember anything about the two girls that disappeared up there? Not really, but I think I had left there before these incidents. I was just wondering if there could be a tie-in with the disappearances down here. I don't know. Look, I'm sure girls disappear, run away, leave, or whatever from campuses all over the country every year. Look, I wish I could help you, but I've got to go inside. Well, that's all I wanted to ask you anyway. Thank you. Don't forget my offer. The Montreche. And everything that goes with it. Badly. Chris, we've been waiting for your call. I couldn't get away from Jake. Listen, you're not going to believe what's happening. It's, it's like a time machine around here. Jake's reliving the night of Rosemary's death. Wait a minute. Bosley, it's happening. It's happening all over again. Listen to me. A few minutes ago, Jake gave me a present. Any guesses? Yeah, a diamond necklace. I'm wearing it right now. And from the looks of the metal box it came in, it's been buried a long time. So anyway, that means if Rinaldi did kill Rosemary, he didn't get the necklace. Chris, listen, I've been trying to tell you, Rinaldi is dead. He's been shot to death earlier tonight. So if Jake had the necklace... <sighs> then Jake did it. Jake killed both of them. Chris, put down the phone and get out of there, now. If, if Jake's reliving that night, then he thinks you're Rosemary. Okay, listen, I'll get Tim. I'll have him take me to the bottom of the road. I'll meet you there. Good, do it now. Explain later. I have to get out of here. Can you drive me? Well, the car's outside. Rosemary! Where are you going? Uh, this party's for you, babe. I have to go, Jake. Don't try to stop me. Is he driving you? She asked me to. Shut your trap! What about your guests? Goodbye, Jake. Thanks, Doc. That wasn't bad, was it? Come on, Elliot. What about my baby? She'll take it. No way. Where are you taking us? I'm not going to stand here talking to you, honey. Move it.
Let me have that, Chris. You okay? Huh? Okay. Come here, sit down. Ah, come on. It's okay. I can do for you, miss? Howdy. I, I'm looking for Blueford Catlin. Something wrong, honey? Oh, no. I, I just thought that you might be, um, somebody else. Blueford's my pa. He's, uh, out by the... the shed. Oh. Well, you mind if I wait? That's... that's him coming now. Well, that's her right there, Mr. Catlin. All right, Josh. You get back to that darn fence and keep it closed. Mr. Catlin? Yeah? Uh, I'm Chris Monroe. I understand you're looking for a new still master, and, well, I'd like the job. There ain't no such job. I wonder who might have said there was. Well, I got uh, big ears, not a big mouth. I just thought it best to come right to the point. Excuse me for saying. But you sure don't look like the sort that can run a still. That is, if you was to find one in these here parts. Well, for whatever it's worth, I got me a college degree in organic chemistry. Uh, good job is hard to find these days. Why don't you give your chance at it, Daddy? That's all I want. I could up your production and up the quality in the bargain. Ten your chores, girl. You come on. Now, supposing you know everything you say you do, you know them things blowing now and again. Well, not if you monitor the temperature properly and vent the pressure. Hand form copper. That's hard to find nowadays. Ain't as hard to find as somebody knows how to use it. Well, the mash is in the cooker. Let's see if you know what you're doing. All right. Well. First thing I gotta do is dog these things down here. Can you hand me that wrench there? Cinch it up real good. You know, girl, these federal agents, sometimes jail, sometimes a little shooting. There's an awful lot of risk for a woman if he was to get the job. Well, now. There's ways to pay for risk. Say 10%. Say 8% in board and lodging. You got yourself a steel master. Where are you hiding the rest of the mash? You're so far good with what you do, you ought to be able to find it on your own. <laughs> 